Um, I already had my kick in the can, so I promise you will keep my remarks brief, and I, I won't uh, repeat uh, my comments about Al Jazeera. And I also am looking forward to hearing your comments in the Q&A. Um, I really, as, as someone who's spent most of the past two and a half years outside of Canada, I have found both presentations incredibly informative. I must say I enjoyed David's optimism, because reflecting on Donald's uh, rather sobering <laughs> analysis, I found myself lunging for my Blackberry, uh, getting in touch with Qatar Airways, and I'm now booked back to <laughs> Doha. <laughs> So folks, good luck. <laughs> no, 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 I'm here for um, I don't, I, I mean, all kidding aside, I must say I, I, um, I am still, even on these issues, an optimist, uh, although I, I do think it's interesting when you kind of leave the country for a period of time, you come back and you kind of snap awake. I do find the media in general, um, all of the media, including some public broadcasters we know and love, Far more conservative in their in their kind of take on on uh, issues than I think is reflective of the Canadian population, you know, and it's and that disconnect is always in any democracy is a worrisome trend. But that aside, and that's something that we all kind of deal with, both as citizens and uh, as you know members of our various media projects, it is something that will constantly challenge us. But I, I, I guess I tend to be somewhat of an optimist. I mean, I have uh, I was invited to be part, from Doha, I was invited to be part of a panel on CBC Radio discussing the Fox News North idea, which I really knew not that much about, um, but I obviously did my research, as we all would do, and you know, I concluded then and I conclude now is that it will be so boring and unwatchable <laughs> I think at the end of the day. Um, I don't think it's something, if we fast forward five or ten years from now, it's something that we're going to look at as a either a positive contribution to the media environment or something that, that really will be a central part of our, of our country's media life. Uh, obviously my view, and I suspect the view of everyone in the room, is you know, in a democracy, bring it on. You know, like if somebody wants to waste money in that way and they have the money, then that's their privilege. But I don't, I don't see um, its, you know, its antecedents, its parentage, uh, I mean, have a track record, and it's not one that is a glorious one journalistically. So it's not so. I don't think I've spent a second of my life worrying about Fox News North or whatever it in the end will be called if it appears on Canadian television set. But I, I must say I do agree with the the views expressed, and I, I'm I think the idea that it would have gotten preferential carriage in Canada was so appalling and anti-democratic that it was amazing that they would even request it. And, but I think it was encouraging that they, that there were interventions that argued contrary. And, and I think, to its credit, I think the CRTC made the right decision. And on the CRTC, let me let me just say again, further to my uh, Mary Poppins Pollyannish optimistic view of the world here, um, that I, uh, as in last year, again as I said earlier, beginning in this city, when we did uh, our little campaign across the country to try to convince Canadians to intervene with the CRTC to allow um, something that is, that is allowed in more than 100 countries worldwide, i.e. that Canadians be given the opportunity to decide whether or not they want to watch Al Jazeera English. It shouldn't be up to lobby groups to determine that. And the CRTC, given its process, you know, consulted with Canadians, and so it was really important that Canadians kind of indicate to the CRTC what they felt, and of the uh, 3,000 public interventions, I think 98% were in favor of Al Jazeera English. Um, and it was a, it were a real, incredibly diverse and very, very uh, reaffirming kind of uh, response. Um, so uh, given that, I mean, it was my view, as this, this kind of process went on for about six months, it was my view that there was no doubt the CRTC had no choice if you look at the regulations and you look at the laws and you look at the process in Canada that Al Jazeera English would be allowed um, broad, to be broadcast in Canada. I ran into in Toronto one day when I was actually in Toronto. I, I ran into a, I won't say who it was, but a very high level liberal um, politician who was kind of quietly supportive of Al Jazeera English, quiet to the point of 
been mute about it publicly, but <laughs> I got, I got used quiet. to it. <laughs> That's very quiet. I, got, I, I was used to that, and I, given the political realities of this country, I, I wasn't surprised. But And he asked me how it was going, and I kind of said what I said, that I said, to me, it's a no-brainer, that you, particularly given what the public has indicated to the CRTC. And he looked at me, and he says, uh, he says, uh, you're not going to get it. There's, it's, there'll, there'll be an intervention, either directly or indirectly, from the PMO or from Jason Kenney. There'll be a pressure on the CRTC, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Which I must say, having just landed from Doha, Qatar, I kind of said, "My God, what's happened to this country?" If that, in fact, uh, would happen. But he proved this liberal person proved to be wrong. I mean, the CRTC, you know, made its decision and made its decision, in my view, on the basis of the regulations that it had in front of it, and it was obviously a correct decision. So I think in that sense, I think that there is, um, and that surprised a lot of people. I mean, there were a lot of people who were amazed that um, given the political nature of the environment of this country, given the some of the political flashpoints that Al Jazeera represents for, for various people in this country, that, you know, that it would kind of uh, slide through the process uh, positively, but it did, and I think that was, uh, you know, obviously I thought it was a reflection of what was a high, is a high quality um, broadcast network, but I think probably more importantly, it's a, it's a reflection of the fact that, you know, many parts of our system, in spite of the challenges and the political um, um, aspects to it that are at play, that many parts of our system still work. Um, I think I'm just going to kind of wrap it up here because I, I really am eager. I think as we all are. How can we get Al Jazeera? Yeah, well, that's that's a good question in the sense of I mean, Al Jazeera is now available on all major platforms in this country. So in other words, if you like, it's on Bell Express U, for example. It's on Rogers. It's on Shaw. It's on um, uh, a whole variety, and it, it will be. I'm talking about the major platforms. It will be on the smaller ones that would service different cities, like Regina, for example, has a different cable system than, um, than you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think the, uh, quite frankly, I think some companies have been incredibly um, uh, cooperative and, and they've reflected, I think, what has been a lot of kind of public appetite for the channel by giving it prominence in its schedule, by promoting it. Other companies, you know, and some of the major ones have, have basically, uh, you know, been incredibly discreet about it to the point where you, uh, you have to, you need to be a forensic scientist to actually get through their call centers to find out. But I mean, it would, it, it, well, it would be on Bell Express you and on Shaw, to, to my knowledge, unless I'm missing it. But, but a lot of these things, I mean, for example, in Rogers and in Bell Express View, there, it's, instead of being what it should be, uh, is part of the news package. In other words, it should come free of charge as, Others do. I mean, if you if you subscribe to the news package, what? Yeah, it's it's available. It's been available on as streaming uh, for the last two or three years. Yeah, yeah. So it's just just go to our website and, and you can pick it up live. But what's happened is that some of the companies, at least at present, have have regarded it as a standalone channel. Like for example, Rogers. It, it means that you have to phone up. You have to pay. I think it's two seventy two dollars seventy nine cents a month for it. But you have to specifically order, and and that's something that I think our our belief, Bell Express View, I think it's the same issue. I mean, our belief is that soon they should allow us to be treated like other news channels, and so that there isn't a kind of a, an added cost. I mean, it's not a you know an onerous cost, but I mean I I think it's something that's significant in you know given the cost of cable bills, and cable bills. But it, it but I think the onus, just to answer your question more directly, the onus I think is on is on Canadians to actually phone their cable and satellite provider and say, you 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 know in some cases you can say you're not really telling us this, but we know you offer Al Jazeera English. How how can we get access to it? Because I think it's I think it is. I mean putting aside Al Jazeera, I think that the, the success ultimately of what we're all involved in, in our own way, is that we support what we're all involved in. So it really is important. It's important for me to support your efforts. It's important for you to support the efforts of other projects or organizations or networks that, that espouse your values, because I think that's the kind of, of um, you know, voting on, from the ground that really can change things in a positive way. So let me, let me, I guess, back to Steve, and we can kind of have a discussion. Thank you.